My name is Steven Hunter. I work over here at Bell Ford. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Ford GT and the history of the vehicle, and that's about it. What I think about the new GT, I think it's a, a great example of what you can do with the 3.5 EcoBoost motor. I mean, a lot of people, you know, they want their V8s or big V10s in their supercars, but I think it's a great halo vehicle to kind of show what the 3.5 engine is capable of. You know, a lot of people think of a twin turbo V6 as a lesser engine compared to like a big old V8. All you have to do is take a look at that vehicle and see that, you know, they, they won Le Mans with the thing. It's super powerful. They've got a lot of reliability built into them and that kind of trickles down into all of the, the Ford vehicles, the trucks, the cars that the 3.5 is in. As far as the Ford GT, the new one is concerned, I think it's gorgeous. The flying buttresses, the overall size, you know, being able to lower the vehicle and raise it back up like in an instant using the hydraulic system makes it something you could actually drive around and, and that's what Ford hopes that all the people who own them do. So which is why they run through an application process to make sure that you're gonna drive that car. The wing is also hydraulic. Uh, in track mode, it comes up permanently in just driving around town. It actually, uh, after you reach a certain speed, it will come up and help with stability at, at higher speeds. So very cool. The history of the GT, it all happened uh, in the 60s. There was a attempt by Ford to purchase Ferrari and it ended in some hot Italian words. And so Ford was very determined to beat Ferrari at Le Mans. We hired on some crack specialists, including Carol Shelby, to develop this new car that would be able to win Le Mans since uh, Ferrari had won it for, I think, six years straight. And in 1966, the GT40, which was the race car, uh, took first, second, and third. Once they won in 1966, they continue to win for four consecutive years. I mean, it's definitely a feat. That's a, one of the most prestigious races to win. I mean, it's 24 hours of racing. It's not only a test of how fast your car is, but reliability and the endurance of your drivers. And it's not just a regular old circle track, that's for sure. So reportedly when the purchase of Ferrari was going down or when the purchase of Ferrari was trying to conclude they're all sitting in a in the boardroom everything was pretty much finalized and at the last minute the owner of ferrari realized that the racing team was supposed to be included and he didn't want to give up the ferrari racing team and essentially said ford will never own ferrari and so then that was basically a slap in the face saying that they we didn't deserve to have the Ferrari racing team. And so that's why Ford was super determined to you know, have a team that was capable of just dominating Le Mans. 
I'm just showing Ferrari who's boss, I guess. <laughs> cool thing about that race is Henry Ford II was actually there to watch all three cross the race, the finishing line. So definitely probably a momentous occasion for him to go through all of that. And, and then they did it in a very short sweep of time to be able to have a vehicle that was able to take the top three places and then go on to win many years in a row. If you know anything. I don't. I know that he has, this guy has zero miles on it. Yeah, it's yeah. still in the wrapper. Yeah, I noticed, that. <laughs> I noticed that. I was like, wow, that's incredible. Yeah. That's absolutely incredible. Yeah, still in the wrapper. Looks like it's probably, I don't even know if it's ever been registered, to be honest. It's definitely, it doesn't have a plate on the back. It's, uh, it's still got all the plastic inside. Probably still smells brand new. Mm -hmm.